Hey everybody, welcome back to PG Disc Golf. Today, I got a short little video for you. I'm gonna be heading to Chattahoochee Point Park in order to compare the zone against the zone OS. So if you are familiar with the channel, it's no secret that I'm a bit of a noodle arm, don't have a, that much arm speed, but I do still like to throw overstable approach discs and the zone is one that I've leaned pretty heavily on and I've used quite a bit. I typically throw ESP zones, like the six claw zone here, but uh, like many, I was interested when they announced the Zone OS, an even beefier version of the zone. Now the zone is plenty overstable for my arm speed. I don't foresee much need for a Zone OS personally, but I wanted to see like, if you have a lower arm speed, is there still room for something overstable like this Zone OS? So we're just gonna play a couple holes at Chattahoochee Point and I'll let you know my thoughts along the way as we're playing through. So we're gonna start off at hole one. Hole one here, 180 feet, par three. You can see the basket on the left side here. I'm actually gonna be going down this right fairway, sending it down as far as straight as I can, letting it fade to the basket. Zone first here, ESP. That looks good. Skip up. That should be parked right next to the basket. That was a good, nice flight, arcing hyzer the whole way. Now we'll try the Zone OS. Noticeably deeper in the hand, but not uncomfortable by any means for me at least. Oh yeah, look at that. That's not even making it to the center. <laughs> oh, and it rolled to the right. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, that has a lot more beef. It feels like it's not as glidey either. It just sort of dumps out of the sky. Not a uncontrollable disc by any means. That's about what I expected, honestly. All right, you can see the Zone OS well short of the basket. Yep, circle's edge. Nope. Zone ended up right here. I don't know if I'm in frame or not, actually. So I will describe it. Maybe 10 feet from the basket. I didn't bring a second putter. So putting with the Zone. Got it. The Zone OS is, oh my God, noticeably beefier. You can see it's also noticeably deeper. This feels way deeper in the hand, like a very deep dish style disc. But for me, it is actually pretty comfortable. I have pretty big hands. Um, I do tend to prefer these smaller, uh, less deep discs though overall, but this still feels pretty comfortable for me. All right, here's a more realistic use case for both of these discs. Uh, hole two at Ch uh, Chattahoochee par four. We're probably 100, maybe 150 feet away from the basket here. Uh, so this is about the distance where I would grab an approach disc. So we'll start with the zone again, then we're gonna do the zone OS and we'll see uh, how close we can get to the basket. Oh, that's gonna be left, but good distance. That's a circle one putt for sure with a zone OS. It doesn't fade further left. It's just more overstable. What I find is it dumps more. So this actually is, I can find this being useful because you kind of can throw it high up, let it crash down to the ground. So if I throw it high and I get the distance right, I can sort of crash it down right by the pin. And then it, usually it won't like flare skip or anything like that. It just sort of falls to the ground. Obviously you could have a roll away or something, but let's see how we can, how we do here. I threw that way wider, but yeah, it just crashes right onto the hill. It does. I might have been wrong initially. It does go pretty far to the left still, but like I said, I can see a use case for it. It's definitely interesting. It's a, it's an interesting dynamic between the two. So the zone, like I thought, went a little left. Didn't throw it out wide enough. Sun right in my eyes. No problem. No problem at all. Then uh, the zone OS right here on the hill, pretty nice throw. I do think both of these discs do have uses, but um, we got a couple more comparisons still. Hole six here, it's 235 feet, par three, basket is straight ahead. So this is sort of that max distance where I think I can potentially get the zone on a really hard rip. We'll see if I can even get the zone OS close. I don't think this is gonna go nearly as far. Oh, I threw that out too wide, but that's distance wise, that's pretty good. I think that's circle's edge. Uh, still short for sure, definitely too wide. But let's see how we can compare with the zone OS. I'm gonna try to throw it on a similar line just as wide 
and we'll see how much further it cuts in and then distance how much I'm losing with the Zono S. Oh my God, <laughs> what a beefcake. That is so short. <laughs> so yeah, the Zone for sure, distance wise, is gonna be so much better than the Zone OS. The Zone OS is gonna be, if, if it were to make the bag at all, which I don't think it's going to honestly, but it would be very situational. Zone OS, way short. Circle two putt here on a 235 foot hole. That is a, that is a beefy boy. And then the Zone, on the other hand, just a hair short. Like I said, too far out to the right though, unfortunately, but circle one putt, much more manageable. All right, so my mic died here on this hole. So a little voiceover for hole nine, which is 180 feet, it's a par three. Very manageable hole, even with the zone and the zone OS, I think. Just have a couple little trees to avoid. Starting off with the zone, I throw pretty high, a little bit on Anheuser 2. It fights out right away and you can see, didn't really have a chance to get an ace, but distance wise, that was pretty solid. Now with the Zone OS, I decided to throw a pretty heavy Anheuser just to see how quick it fights out. You can see it fights out pretty quickly, but honestly, that was a pretty nice flight. It looks like it was pretty close to the basket. Apparently the mics shut off, so that's amazing. Really pumped about that. Gonna have to do some voiceovers or something, I guess. All right, Zone OS ended here. Oh God. <laughs> Jeez, amazing. I'm just so frustrated. What the heck happened to my mics? Oh, that's really annoying. I thought it was the battery because I know they're, they were a little low, but battery levels are fine. It just shut down. Maybe it got oh, too hot or something. Zone, way over here. Same, similar distance, that Zone OS actually was a little closer. Oh, geez. Hole 14, 190 feet, par three. Another good hole for both of these discs here. It got a pretty manageable distance. So just gonna hang it out to the right, see how far it fades. Start with the Zone, then we'll go Zone OS. Ooh, that was really close. Zone OS, I'm gonna hang out a little wider. Bend it. All right, well, I am all finished up comparing the Zone against the Zone OS here today. Honestly, the Zone OS surprised me a bit. It is an absolute beefcake. Like, don't get that wrong. It is very overstable, much more overstable than the regular Zone here. And, and personally, like, the Zone is plenty of beef for me, especially at my slower arm speed. I, use, I definitely don't need one of these Zone OSs, but they are fun to throw. And I can see some like very niche use cases for something like the Zone OS, even with my lower arm speed. I find that if you throw it nice and high, it'll still have a strong overstable finish to the left, but rather than just sort of slowly panning in, it's gonna turn and crash down. And so you might be able to use that to your advantage if you say it had to land like an island or something and you don't want it to skip anywhere forward. The Zone OS might be a decent choice for you because it'll just sort of have more of a crash down to where it's landing. Uh, I could I could see having a knee for that. Also, it's, it is pretty nice on some flex shots as well. If you put some good Anheuser on it, it's gonna fight out of it pretty quickly. But if you have like a tree, you know, maybe 10, 15 feet in front of you and you need some way to get around it, but still go over to the left, this could be a viable option. The zone is still gonna be plenty overstable for me. I'm, I don't foresee adding this zone OS to my bag by any means, but it is fun to throw. But that's gonna be it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't yet, I would greatly appreciate it if you consider subscribing to the channel. If you enjoyed watching this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and also ring that notification bell so you can be notified when our next episode comes out. Until next time, guys, cheers. Thank you.